Jehovah, there's no God like Jehovah. 
Some have a special need and some need healing. We're going to ask God to stand in the gap for them. If you trusted God with this evening, go ahead and lift up your hands. Let's pray this evening. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you right now, oh God. 
Lord Jesus, it is only you that has allowed us to come this far. Only you are God. Father, there's not another God before you. There wasn't one after you, Lord Jesus. Lord God, and there is not a God beside you. Jesus, you alone are God. You need no help doing anything. You counsel within yourself. You are wisdom. You are knowledge and understanding. You are discretion. Lord Jesus, you're everything we need when we need it the most. And this evening, we need you to save somebody. This evening, we need you to heal somebody. This evening, we need you to break the yoke of bondage upon somebody's life. Someone has a little bit of faith, but I know you to be the God of the little faith. Someone just has a little seed left, but you said if we had the grain, faith the size of a mustard seed, that alone will suffice. So God, I'm praying, stand in the gap for your people this evening. Touch those that need to be touched. Heal those that need a healing, a healing in their body, a healing in their mind, a healing in their soul, oh God. I pray tonight that you would have your way. Level the mountains that are before your children, oh God. Help us, oh God, to be ahead of the adversary. That when he comes in like a flood, we will look unto the hills from which cometh our help. We give you the glory, we give you the honor and the praise. In the mighty name of Jesus, clap your hands unto God. As you can see me. Hallelujah. We thank God for his presence. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We want to welcome all of our guests and all of our visitors. If this is your first time here with us this evening, you are no longer a guest, but you are considered family. We've been praying and asking God to bring you home. And it's not by coincidence you found yourself home this evening. You may not know it now, but this is home. Amen. So we thank God that you've come to worship with us. Even those that are on Facebook Live or those that are watching us through Instagram, we're praying that you would soon be able to join us in person because this thing, you just can't get it on camera. You need to be in person to get this. So we're praying and encourage you watch with us. But if you're able to attend with us, Facebook and Instagram, please come and worship with us in Jesus' name. We have some church announcements for us to adhere to this evening. Firstly, Sunday school begins every Sunday morning at 10 a.m. Following our Sunday school, we have our Sunday morning service, and that begins promptly at 11 a.m. We also have our Sunday night service, and this is at 6.30 p.m., but we do have 6 o'clock prayer. Also, our Monday in-depth Bible study. And this is every Monday at 8 p.m. We come here, pastor is up here giving the word of God, and as he says, scripture interprets scripture. So it's not an opinionated answer. If you have questions, these are all biblical or scripturally based answers. So we want to encourage you to come to these Monday night Bible studies as well. Also, we have our Wednesday midweek service that begins at 7.30 p.m., but we also have 7 o'clock prayer. So if you need a ride or if you know someone that will need a ride, please text your name and complete address to the number upon the monitor, area code 561-463-2257, and someone will contact you with the pickup time. <laughs> Now, regarding bus pickup, we are asking you text or call the day before service with your address or location because the bus drivers will not, somebody say will not. That means cannot and will not be able to pick up any new pickups 10 minutes before service. So please remember our bus drivers. We want them to be a part of the service with all that they do. Let's clap our hands for our bus drivers. And they do this thing like this is their job of theirs, and they treat it with such discipline. So we thank God for those that are driving the buses because without them, it'd be difficult to get everyone here. So they're taking the time out of their day to pick us up and get us here safely. So we thank God for them. Let's remember them that they can be in service as well. So for any other questions, please see myself or Pastor Garland. Somebody say home Bible studies. All right, so if you know someone that would like a personal home Bible study, or if you yourself are interested in a personal home Bible study, we're encouraging you to submit your name to the greeters, and we'll set you and your family up. We'll come to your home or wherever you would like to meet, and we'll teach you in the comfort of your zone. And it's 45 minutes to an hour is all that we're asking. One time a week, 45 minutes to an hour. So if you can't come with us on a Monday, please sign up for these home Bible studies at your convenience. And if you say, well, no, I don't want to do home Bible study, then we encourage you to come out to our Monday nights. They're both on the table for you. Amen. 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 Also, every morning from Monday to Friday, we have our New Life Family Prayer Line. So we're asking, please join us. 
from 5 a.m. to 6 a.m. by calling in the prayer line number, area code 605, it's on the monitors, 468-8757. Then you can punch in your access code, 990-108. And you can pray with us from 30 minutes up to an hour. And our focus, of course, is to pray for the lost. Now, the prep breakfast is fastly approaching. So let's get ready to draw closer to the Lord. In your life at this prayer breakfast, remember the price is now $30 for adults. Okay, so you can register online or you can use a tithing envelope and write a prayer breakfast on it, filling in your entire information. So for more information concerning that, you can see Sister Garmin. Amen. The holidays are here and it is an opportunity to think of the less fortunate. So December 22nd, in our Sunday morning service at 11 a.m., we will be having a gift giveaway for all of our children. Praise God. Amen. We don't want one child leaving here saying they didn't get anything. So we're asking if the saints can help by purchasing a gift for a boy and girl for $5 and under for each one. And you can start bringing those gifts in, somebody say ASAP, as soon as possible. We want all of our children to receive a gift. So parents, please bring your children to this service so they can receive the gift. Now, New Life Tabernacle will be giving away two brand new bicycles to two children, two special children. So for more information concerning that, you can see Pastor Garman directly. Also, to all of the men that truly love God, let me hear you say hallelujah. hallelujah. Amen. We're alive in the evening as well. Praise God. And are not ashamed to worship him in spirit and in truth. This fifth Sunday of the month is men's service. Amen. Amen. So I don't know about you all, but I have a high expectation of God. Because when you come in with low expectations, you get just what you expect. So I'm coming with high expectations of God. And if I don't need something, I'm sure I'm standing and praying for someone who does need something from God. And so we want all of the men of God to get ready to be involved in this service. Brothers, say Fifth Sunday. Fifth Sunday. Amen. We got it in our calendars. Fifth Sunday is a men's service. The men's choir will meet next Sunday at 4.30 p.m. And if you're like me, you're going to get here at 5 and the pastor won't rebuke you immediately. So please, get here at 4.30. Amen. Here at New Life, which is where we're going to meet in the education wing for choir rehearsal. So brothers, let's get involved in this thing. And we want all of the brothers to wear blue for unity. Brothers, let me hear you say blue. blue. This color represents the unity for our fifth Sunday service. So we want you to come with high expectations and wearing something blue. Amen. 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 Now, we reach the part of the service where we get to give in Jesus' name. Let me ask you all to stand up on your feet. And we prepare our hearts and our minds for this evening's offering. As the ushers are getting in place, need I remind you, we have a kiosk in the back for your usage. Uh, whether you're doing Visa, debit, or credit, you're able to use that. If you have an envelope, please make sure you fill out that envelope in its entirety, designating where you would want your money to go. As Pastor often says, we want to keep things in decency and in order. Amen. Amen. All right, and if you're able to stand with us, please stand. Let's go before this great God in prayer. Father, in the name of Jesus, once again, do we thank you, Lord God. We thank you, Lord Jesus, for all that you've done for us, oh God. You've provided a way, oh God, where we did not see another way. And Lord Jesus, for that alone, we are thankful. Lord Jesus, I pray tonight that you will look upon those who are giving for the advancement of your kingdom. Lord God, they're trying you by your word, and I pray that you would show yourself as God. You are your word, and we cannot separate you from your word. So show up for them, O oh God. Open up the windows of heaven for them and pour out a blessing, O oh God, that they have not room enough to receive it. And Lord Jesus, look upon those who had the mind to give and desire to give, but they did not have the substance, that when they come back to your house, their hands are overflowing just to give unto you, that they will be glorified honored and praised in Jesus name amen we're going to start with this middle section from the very back working our way to the front you are now in the hands of the ushers Thank you. 
but he's a God of your breakthrough. Let him know that he's the God of your breakthrough. Somebody tell him thank you. If he's made a way out of no way, tell him thank you. If he's opened doors for you, tell him thank you. If he healed you, tell him thank you. If he's putting things back together, tell him thank you. If he gave you the Holy Ghost, tell him thank you. If he washed away your sins, tell him thank you. We thank you. Hallelujah. 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 Clap your hands, everybody, in this place. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. Give honor to God. We thank you for being back here in our night evening service here at New Life on MLK. Our doors are open again that you can continue to get more word and continue to walk upright before God. We usually will say, people say we need a balanced life. But it's very hard to have a balanced life because you spend so much time outside of church or outside of service. You can spend eight hours sleeping. You can spend 10 or 12 hours on your job. Well, you've already beat church because church is only in for an hour and 45 minutes. <laughs> so when people say we need a balance, well, I say we do need a balance. That means we need more church. Amen to that. And so we thank God for that. But we're here again Sunday morning, Sunday nights. And if you're able to make it, we are here for Monday night Bible study. And that is Monday tomorrow. We're here in those Monday night Bible study. It's informal. It's relaxing. You can come. And everyone is here. Our Monday night Bible studies are growing. Sometimes our Monday night Bible study, we're now reaching 100 people in a night Bible study. That's a wonderful thing. People have got here in the Glade area, that's more than some people have on a Sunday morning. We have that in a Monday night Bible study. It is an opportunity where you can come. You can ask that question because a lot of things go out over the pulpit and things that have maybe been told to you over the years. You can say, hey, uh, somebody said this, or I've heard about this. Can you show me in the scripture where this actually is so that I can know where that is or if that's actually in the word of God and is that what that means? And so in those Monday night or those Bible studies, we should be able to go back in the Word, show you Scripture, interpret Scripture. So I'll show you in the New Testament as well as if it's in the Old Testament as well and give you another one so you can take home with that one as well. That way you will know for a fact what the Word of God is saying. So come on to that. And again, as a brother said, we are a praying church. I was taught by my pastor and my bishop to pray. Prayer is what changes things. And so... If you have a prayer life or you want to develop a prayer life, you're at the right place. But we come to this house and we pray. We pray before service starts. The reason why we do that is because we want to get our minds and hearts ready to receive the word of God. And so we know a lot of things go on, but we come in early to pray for 30 minutes. As well as on our Saturdays, we come and we pray at 6 o'clock. So if you ride past, you will see cards out here and we're praying for the lost. So remember all of those things. I want to thank God for the four souls that went down in the name of Jesus Christ this morning. Clap your hands, everybody. Thank God. Sister Abora, Sister Gabrielle, Sister Paula Wright, and as well as Sister Shanice Ray. We just want to thank God for them for they obeyed that form of doctrine and obeyed the word of God to go down in Jesus' name. And so I thank God to see our sister here tonight. Why don't we give her a hug? Don't just leave out of here and act like you don't see her. But hug on her, love on her, and just thank God for her. So we understand that God is doing so many things in our lives. God is blessing us. God is keeping us. And he is adding to the church daily such as to be saved. And so we want to thank God for all of them that have come and to hear the word of God. Hear what I'm saying, people of God. There's going to come a time that now that they have been baptized and then you have one that received the Holy Ghost, we want God to continue to keep them in the house of God. So this is the time as saints, we need to pray for our new converts, pray for those that have been baptized because the enemy is going to try to attack to keep them from coming back and keeping them from getting plugged in. But we are those saints to be able to pray, call out their names and begin to say, Lord, keep her, keep them in the house of God, keep their children in the house of God. Give them a desire and a hunger and a thirst after righteousness and for God's word to continue to grow. 
Because it's better, we want to be spiritual, not religious. We want to know the word of God. And we don't want to be religious people. But we need to know what the word of God is saying so that we can live it. Amen? Amen. So remember all of those announcements. We want to wish again everyone a happy birthday and a happy anniversary here in this month of December. Get ready. We are going to have our watch night service. They call it watch night or New Year's service. It's going to be jam-packed. We're going to have a wonderful time. I'm excited to see the new souls that are going to come in in the beginning of the year. We're already at that mark of 400 people being baptized in the year. And in 2019, we're there. People of God, that's a wonderful thing. And over 400 people being baptized here in the Glade area. And we're already getting over that 150 mark for the Holy Ghost. So I thank God for what he's allowed us to do in this short amount of time of two years. And we're going into our third year come June. And so we're getting excited. But in our watch night service, get ready for that invite. We have flyers out there. We want you to give it out. We want you to put it on your social media page. Just try to invite somebody. Tell them, hey, if you ain't been to church all this year, this is a good time for you to start coming to church on the New Year's and bringing in the New Year. Amen. We are going to have a wonderful, our hospitality team, Sister Moore is going to be serving uh, food so you can take home on that night. So it's going to be a jam pack. As I tell you many times, get here early because the seats that you see will not be available if you don't get here on time. Amen. And so we're going to pull out more chairs. We're actually are ordering more chairs come next year. As I told you, we're going to do a reconfiguration to this building. We've already started. We've done this. It didn't, it did not look like this when we first started. And so now, because we are growing, we got to create more room for souls and mankind to come on in. And so you're going to see a change. You're going to see a change in our pulpit. We're going to put in our choir loft as well. And I understand, as I told you, our choir members, uh, the music ministry has ordered their new robes. And so those robes will be coming in for next year. More people will be added to the choir, more teachers that are going to be teaching. So many things happening for next year. I'm excited about what God is going to do. And I'm excited for God for our new building that we're going to be going into. Amen. God has given us and he's going to bless us with that new building. And we're going to be able to have more room than we can ever imagine. And so I thank God. And I know that he's going to raise up either other daughter churches from this church. And so we are mimicking what's going on in Tampa from Pastor Collins and Bishop Davey. For they are our leaders. And I thank God for them being my pastor, my leader. And I follow behind them. And so please, if you have any questions... Please come and see me. Today we had a wonderful man's choir rehearsal. And when I tell you people of God, these brothers came and showed up and started to sing. I'm telling you, look out. There's a new choir in town called the New Life Choir, Man's Choir. Amen to that. Amen. Amen. And so we want you to please help us and support in Jesus' name. I tell you, I love, like I said, I love uh, the sisters in the house of God, I thank God for the mothers that are here that have a desire to live for God. And when you can come to a church and you see men praising God, real men, not lip wrist men, but men that truly love God and want God to do it. Nowadays we have a lot of pride and ego, but now we need to get some men that don't mind worshiping God. Amen to that. Don't mind clapping your hands unto God and singing unto God and giving him glory and honor and letting the young man know it's cool to worship and to live for God. Amen? Amen to that. I want real quick, Brother Lynch, if you would come, sir. Uh, he talked to me today and I, and I it, it touched my heart uh, for what he was telling me that took place. How many ever heard of that saying that people don't care how much you know until they know how much you care? And so he touched my heart because I'm praying that we would all get to a place where there's enough compassion on your heart for mankind. And so this is something that you may say that is simple, but I'm saying it's something that's starting on the inside of him because of what God touched his heart uh, after this took place. So I'm going to let him talk to you very popcorn quick, but let him know what you talk to me about, sir. This morning. This morning, I was riding through the streets. I seen a young man standing beside the street. There was a plate on the ground. He bent down, opened the thing up. There's some scrap food in there. What's good from last night? He reached out and he picked it up. He went to eat me. I said, I'm going to 
the next day. I said, you're home. He said, yeah. I left there. I went to Burger King crying. The tears in my eyes. Because I know what he had been through. Because I have been there too. I went and bought him a sandwich. Some takeaway edges. And I a cup of coffee. And I also bought him some too. I sat there. I parked and sat there. And we ate together. And I asked him, she all right? He said, yeah. I said, hey, do you know where this church down to the thousand? He said, no. But the idea, the young man, he left the ground. It's sad. It's really sad. You know, when you see that kind of stuff going on, it's right here and there, right? So, you know, it, it, it gave me no meaning. And maybe look at life in a different. Okay, I do what you're doing. Some people don't want to do it. I don't want to talk about it too long because it's going to break his backs. And he just began to tell me that I was watching the man, that he too was there in that place. And while we're driving going home, there are others that do not have what you have. And maybe they might have made a mistake along the way. And they've turned to whether it be drugs, and they become homeless, and maybe family or something has happened in their life. But there still needs to be enough compassion in our heart to be able to say, Lord, what can I do? What more can I do? We don't have a lot of money to give, but I can give them you. And you can pick them up, you can dust them off, and you can put them in a place, God, just the way that you put us. And so they are out there hurting. Do you have enough compassion to do that? Do you have enough compassion to invite them to church so that they can hear a word of God and feel love like they've never felt it before? Because they feel like they're forgotten. And many times you'll walk past them and don't speak to them. Because you're saying that they're on drugs and that's their fault for that. And I get it. I understand it. And I understand what he said. It's easier said than done. I know the struggle is real when you're addicted or when you're in the situation. But we serve a God that is able to turn it around. Amen to that. We serve a God that can take a homeless man, put him in a house and turn him around and begin to teach Bible studies. And will touch everybody in this city because you'll be saying... That's that man that I saw on the corner. But look at him now, worshiping and praising God. All of us got a story in here. If they heard it, they wouldn't believe it. But thanks be to God. So clap your hands up to God. Give God praise and thank God. Because you can just remember last year where you were. But look at where you are today in the house of God. We give God glory and we give Him praise. So I thank God for that testimony, sir. I thank you. Let God use you how he uses you. We don't have to be in a limelight for everybody to see what we do. We don't have to let people know what we do, but I just wanted you to share it, and we will get into our heart. We're going into 2020, and we understand that God is soon to come back. He's coming back, and so we don't have a lot of time. And when I stand before him, I want to be able to say, Lord, I did everything that I could do in the glade area for the souls of man to be saved. And it is a funny thing. I'm not from Bell Glade from this area. But I came here and I have a heart. And I'm not leaving this area. I'm here to stay until the Lord takes me. I want to see every soul saved. that can be saved hearing this true message. Acts 2.38. Repent. Be baptized in the name of Jesus. And receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. And walk in a holy and a consistent life. This is what Apostle Peter preached. Jesus said he gave Peter the keys to the kingdom and we are to follow because God passed it down to them and this is how we got the message today and we thank God for what he is doing here in the house of the Lord so let us stand on our feet we have a man of God that's going to come and deliver the word I am excited about what God is going to say to us tonight so let's put our hands together and let's thank God for Minister Smith somebody say to him preach the word of God in Jesus name amen amen
Amen. I thank the Lord for being in the house of the Lord again tonight. What a powerful time we had this morning in the presence of the Lord. And here we are again in the house of the Lord. So if you have your Bibles, we're going to hasten right into the word of the Lord. I promise you I will not be long before you. We're going to go to the book of Acts, chapter number 16. I do thank the Lord for giving me an opportunity to stand before God's people. I don't take it lightly that I'm in the pulpit standing before the Lord's people. Uh, thank God for our pastor for gracing me with an opportunity. Bishop for allowing our pastor to come into this city to establish and preach truth. Amen. Acts chapter number 16. If you have it, shout amen. amen. Acts chapter number 16, and we're going to begin reading at verse number 16. And it came to pass as we went to prayer. A certain damsel possessed with the spirit of divination met us, which brought her masters much gain by soothsaying. The same followed Paul in us and cried, saying, These men are the servants of the Most High God, which shew us or show us unto us the way of salvation. Verse number 18 tells us, In this did she. Many days. Somebody shout many days. She did it many days. But Paul, being grieved, turned and said to the Spirit, I command thee in the name of Jesus Christ to come out of her. And he came out the same hour. I'm going to talk for a few moments about this title, Enough is enough. I'm going to ask pastor to pray over this service and this word that God would have his way. Come on, let's pray. Father God, we give you the glory. We give you the honor and the praise. For Lord God, we take it a privilege, Lord God, and an honor to be able to, Lord God, be able to read the word of God. We thank you for allowing us to be in the house of the Lord. Father, right now, touch your vessel, your servant right now, that as he preaches the word of God, that he will speak only that which you told him to say. I pray, Lord God, you will use him in a mighty way like you've never used him before. I pray, let the anointer fall, Lord God, down upon him, oh God. Touch our hearts. Let our hearts be open to receive in this place, oh God. As we have assembly together, oh God, we pray, let the Lord God's scriptures come off the page. And let your will be done, oh God That when we leave here, we can all say It was good that we were back in the house of the Lord again Father, there's somebody here that needs to be saved That they need to be baptized or repent And filled with the Holy Ghost Lord God, we expect you to do it We expect you to have your way Touch us right now, have your way in Jesus' name And we will remember to give you the glory, honor, and praise In Jesus' mighty name we all say Amen, amen Clap your hands, everybody, in this place Amen. As you be seated in the presence of the Lord, thank each and every one of you for being in the house of the Lord. It is amazing what you and I would tolerate. I know I said I wasn't going to get loud. I said I wasn't going to bust a sweat. So y'all pray for the minister. <laughs> but it is amazing what you and I would tolerate. Toleration is not something that would work within me. I watch throughout this day and time that we live in, parents on how they would chastise their kids, uh, uh, they came up with this number system. Anybody ever heard of the number system? Nobody ever heard of the number system. But you've been Walmart, and you see this here parent and their child in Walmart, and the parent would say, Johnny, come here. And Johnny don't come. And so the parent would then say, Johnny, I'm going to count to 10. One, two, three. Mom get all the way up to 10 and Johnny still don't come. Johnny, you better come. I wasn't raised like that. You know, my mom would say, Jake, you better come here. And I said, but, and mom was going to bang. I don't, she don't get to number one. But so there was no number system when it came to me being raised up. But now it amazes me what people would tolerate in this world that we live in. And so the scripture text here is amazing that 
we see here that our scripture text that this individual, the spirit, had been following the men of God and had been uh, 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 chugging at these individuals uh, and they tolerated it. For the scripture says not just one day, not just two or three days, uh, but the Bible says for many days uh, this spirit would come and say these men uh, are the most high God which bring us, show us the way of salvation. Uh, but the scripture says one particular day, uh, the, the scripture says that uh, Paul, he had got fed up and he said enough is enough and he began to turn to that spirit and rebuke that spirit out of the woman. He finally reached that point that he was done dealing with what he was dealing with. And so the scripture says that he turned to the woman and he would rebuke the spirit out of the woman and the problem eliminated. It amazes me that we as individuals, what we would tolerate, we as the people of God have to get to a place and a point in our lives where we get fed up with the spirit of this world. Testimony had just came and said that these individuals are homeless, don't have any food, don't know where the next meal is coming from. I know it's like life struggles and stuff, but there's a spirit behind that and there's a spirit is in this city uh, that you and I are living in uh, and we've got to get to a place uh, in a point in our lives with God that we say enough is enough. Uh, no longer will I allow this spirit uh, to come into this city uh, and take over the souls. Uh, for there's a new church in town. Uh, there's a new people in town. Uh, the gospel has reached uh, the community uh, of the Glades area and we are fed up. Uh, and so we're saying enough is enough. Amen. Oh yes. So people are dealing with things in life. People are dealing and struggling with things. You've got to make up in your mind that you say, you know what? Enough is enough. I will not go into 2020 battling and struggling with the same spirits. Enough is enough, devil. We know that the enemy has a bull's eye right upon our kids. But we've got to get fed up with that spirit. We've got to get troubled in our minds that you know what, devil? Enough is enough. So the book of Numbers, chapter number 25, verse number 1 through 8. The good it says here on the monitor. While the Israelites were kept at Acacia Grove, some of the men defiled themselves by having sexual relations with local Moabite women. Mm-hmm. These women invited them to attend sacrifices to their gods. So the Israelites feasted with them and worshipped the gods of Moab. In this way, Israel joined in the worship of Baal Epor, causing the Lord's anger to blaze against his people. You've got to understand what's going on here. This is like the church here. In the church, somebody began to step out and bring some sexual relations into the camp. And God began to speak to the people and told them, I want you to go in and slay these men. Kill these individuals that's bringing sin in the camp. And the scripture says the Lord issued the following command to Moses. Seize all the ringleaders and execute them before the Lord in broad daylight. So his fierce anger uh, would turn uh, from the people of Israel. Uh, so Moses ordered, verse number five, uh, he ordered Israel judges, uh, each of you must put to death uh, the men under your authority uh, who have joined in worship in Baal Eopor. Uh, just then, uh, as the people uh, will begin to gather themselves together, uh, just then one of the Israelite men uh, brought a Midianite woman into the tent uh, right before uh, the preacher eyes, right before Moses' eyes, and all the people, as everyone was weeping, and so these people are at the church, they're in the church house, and they're worshiping God, because God has set down a plan, and they're killing people, people are dying, because this sexual spirit have crept into the camp, and right before their eyes, this bold spirit rises up, bring this individual 
spiritual end. And the scripture says that they went into the tabernacle and with Anaya son of Elzar and the grandson of Aaron, the priest saw this. He jumped up and left the assembly. He took a spear and rushed after the man into this tent. Benaiah thrust the spear all the way through the man's body into the woman's stomach. So the plague against the ears of life was stopped. It is amazing what we, as the people of God, would tolerate. But one man said, you know what? Enough is enough. This spirit it will not come and take over the congregation. It will not take over this campground. I will go out and pursue this spirit. And while they was in there doing what they was doing, the Bible says that this young man grabbed the spear, left the church house, and began to thrust and kill these individuals in the very act what they was doing because he got fed up. He said, you know what? I will no longer tolerate this. I will no longer tolerate this foolishness. I wish to God in this 21st century as we the people of God would get a spirit within us that we would no longer tolerate the things that are in this city, the things that are in our lives. No longer would the devil come and push us. This here here happened right before about 24,000 people had died. And so after 10 people died, you would think that people's mindset would begin to change. After about a thousand of them died, you would think that people's mindset would begin to change. But no, friend, a spirit had to rise up. And that young man said, enough is enough. I will no longer tolerate this in this century. We got to get a backbone like that. We won't go into 2020. We need to get a backbone and say, you know what? Enough is enough. Right. So our scripture here, amazing that what the hell that people would put up and tolerate in their lives before they say enough is enough. Read the scripture and you find out that there was a man that God spoke to and said, I want you to go to Nineveh and preach because these that began to get corrupted and so he spoke to Jonah and told Jonah go to the city of Nineveh and preach my word and Jonah disobeyed you know the story he went to Tarshish he disobeyed God and so the scripture says while he was on a ship God caused a storm to come God caused chaos to come most things in our lives is not just the things that happen in the world but God is sending them our way to cause to grab our attention. And so we have these spirits that are bold in our city. We was talking to somebody the other day. And we living in a world now where there is nobody hiding their sin. There is nobody, oh, friend, Pastor just said that people are coming out of the closet everywhere, everywhere, in every moment. Sin is on a rampage. Nobody cares anymore. But we as the church, as apostolics, as people of God, got to get in our spirit. They say that enough is enough. We've got to be bold. Because this enemy is not pursuing us with 10% of his power. The devil is not coming at us with 15% of his power. The Bible tells us in Revelation that the Satan, that the deceptive one, he has come among us with great wrath. Oh, he's coming full force. And we as the people got to get a boldness within us. No longer would the devil be coming to attack our kids. We see what's going on in the world. All this sex trafficking things uh, going on. They're snatching kids. Uh, they're snatching older people. Uh, that spirit is on a rampage. Uh, and if we're going to sit down and be passive uh, and be cute and quiet, uh, God ain't calling none of that. Uh, he's calling for people uh, to be bold, uh, to be subject uh, and understand authority. Uh, that when you've got the Holy Ghost, uh, God gave you power. God gave you authority uh, over those spirits. Uh, and we've got to use it. Oh yes, the devil is attacking marriages. He's coming after marriages. He's coming after individuals that are seeking the will of God. We've got to get fed up with the enemy and say enough is enough. I'm no longer tolerating. I won't go into 2020 with this. 
So in order for us to remove this tolerance, we've got to rebuke the devil. We've got to rebuke the devil. If we notice here, our scripture text, Acts chapter 16, verse 18, tells us here, and did this many days, but Paul being grieved, he got tired, got fed up, and said to the spirit, I command you in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ to come out of her, and he came out that same hour. Paul did not struggle to get rid of that spirit. There was no struggle or no fight to get rid of that spirit. The scripture says that when he told and commanded the spirit to come out of that woman, immediately the same hour the spirit came out of the woman. And if you're tired and if you're frustrated like me of these spirits that's attacking us, that's coming after us, I'm here to tell you that when you begin to rebuke that spirit, you cannot rebuke the devil if we're battling with the same spirit that we're trying to get out of the devil. We cannot do that. We have got to grab a hold of ourselves and repent. Amen. And so here, my first point is we've got to repent. We've got to get in our minds that we can't struggle when it's time for us to rebuke the devil. We've got to have the power and we've got to have the authority to do it. We can't rebuke homosexual out of somebody if we're battling and struggling with it. We can't rebuke that. We've got to get rid of it. That's right, sir. Oh, God help us. And so here, Mark chapter number three, verse number 23, look what it says here on the monitor. It says, and he called them unto him and said unto the parables, how can Satan cast out Satan? You can't do it. You can't do it. You cannot cast out a spirit that is in that person. If you're battling and struggling with that spirit in yourself, you've got to get rid of the spirit in you. That's just like the scripture talks about. How are you going to get rid of the moat that's out of that other, being that other brother's eye when you've got that big moat in your own eyes? You've got to get rid of that pain. If you want to face the devil and come after the devil, you've got to repent. Can't do it. You need the Holy Ghost. You need that power force. You will no longer tolerate. When we tolerate things, we become comfortable with those things. When we tolerate sin, we become comfortable with that thing. It becomes norm. It becomes usual. And I'm here to tell you that the moment we walk out of this church and there's sin before our eyes, and it don't cause our spirit to rise up, friend, you better check yourself. That when you see two men hug up and it don't grieve your spirit, you better check yourself. When you see the filth and the perverse that is going on in the city and it don't do nothing to your spirit, check yourself. You may need to repent. That's good, sir. That's good. Because deliverance requires human motivation. God works with you to bring you out. He said, no, brother, I don't need to repent. We in the church. Second Chronicles, chapter 7, verse number 14. It says, if my people. Now, not, every, not everybody's God's people. All right? But the scripture says, if my people, which are called by my name. These folks are called by his name. Shall humble themselves. So that lets us know right there that we can get high-minded. And pray. And seek my face. Wait a minute. And turn from their wicked ways. What if this is a God's people? But they got some wicked ways. And so we all have to come to a place in our lives where we repent daily. Oh, yes. And so you read the story in the account about Abraham, nephew Lot. How the scripture talks about the city of Sodom and Gomorrah. How. God began to tell and speak to Abraham and say, hey, I'm about to destroy this city. I'm paraphrasing it now. I'm about to destroy this city. And Abraham began to pre-adventure and began to intercede and say, no, Lord, let just spare the city. If there be 50 righteous people, and he began to go and encounter with God, God spare the people. I want you to spare him, Lord, if there be righteous people in the city. And so the scripture says here that God spoke and 
gave dispatch angels uh, to go into that city uh, because Lot was right there in the city uh, in the, at the gate. You know what was going on in the city. Uh, there were some wicked things going on in the city. Uh, and so God dispatched his angels. Uh, if you read the scripture and notice that angels here in the book of Revelation, uh, it talks about the angel of the church. Uh, it's talking about the pastor. Uh, and that God was sometimes uh, at the last resort, uh, he would send the angel uh, to instruct, uh, to give final warning uh, and instructions uh, before da uh, uh, damnation. Uh, and so God dispatched these angels uh, to come to this city. Uh, and they got to the city and Lot said, hey, come on and dine with us. Uh, these are guests. Uh, come on and be with us. Uh, and so the the Bible says these angels went in and they began to dine with Lot. And the men that was in the city, they saw these angels go into that house. They came and they knocked on that door and say, hey, brother Lot came to the door. Say, what's going on? Hey, we want those men that came in there. You better understand the spirit that was operating in that city. And Lot began to say, no, man. So you don't understand here. Lot got comfortable and got complacent with the spirits that were going on in the city. Because watch this right here now. The scripture says that Lot began to say, hey, you can go have my two daughters here. Please get my two daughters. But don't touch these men. And the scripture says that the angels, they blinded the men. And they told Lot, hey, you get your family. You get your in-laws. You get your goods. And get out of the city. But the Bible says that Lot lingered. He waited. He got comfortable. He was comfortable because he had tolerated the spirit that was in that city for so long. And the scripture says that the angels Come on, grabbed son. a hold of him. Yes, sir. And thrust them out of the city. Yes. Now you find that not too many times in the Bible where God will go against your will. Normally, God don't go against the will of man. But Lot's will was to stay in the city because he lingered. But God sent these angels. These angels grabbed Lot and his family and thrust them out of the city. But we can't lean upon, remember, the angels, they represent the pastor. We can't lean upon the pastor. But for so long, he can only bring us to a point for and so these angels, they had got to a point where they was reaching the climax where they can carry them. And they dropped them off and said, run! Yeah. And don't look back. That's right. And you read the book. You find out that Lot's wife, yes. God brought them out of the city. Right. God will bring us out of the sin. But it's up to us right. to get the sin out of us. Because Lot's wife, he had brought her out of that city. She was running. And they say, don't look back. That was the charge. But Lot's wife, I believe she said, I just want to get one more look. I just want to go back and look one more time. Because she got uncomfortable and complacent with the things that were going on in that city. She looked back and it was his. Yes. That's good, sir. So God will bring us out of our situation. But it's up for us to get the situation from out of us. The pastor would send warnings after warnings. Yeah. It's like an individual that is in the ocean and they're drowning. And the pastor is giving them life jackets. Hey, here's a message. Here's a word. But it's up to the individual to put the jacket on in order to get saved. Yeah. It's up to us to repent. And get rid of these problems. Jonah had that issue. All of what Jonah went to. Just for the man to get in the belly of the well to pray. You mean to tell me he had to go through all of that to pray? God will send trouble our way. He'll send storms our way. These are warnings. These are instructions for us to get us to a place of repentance. So my second point is after we have repented. We have to face that spirit. Our scripture text, Acts chapter 16, verse number 18. It tells us, And this did she many days, but Paul, being grieved, being grieved, turned and said to the spirit. He faced that spirit. When you're really fed up with the devil, you will face him. 
Notice Samuel chapter 17, verse number 8 through 11. It says, Goliath stood and shouted and taunt across the area of Israelites. Why are all ye coming out to fight? He called. I am a Philistine champion, but ye are only the servants of Saul. Choose one man to come down here and fight me. That spirit was rising up, and that spirit began to talk to these Israelites and talk to himself, sort of like that woman that had the spirit of divination. But the scripture says, it says, I am the Philistine champion, only the servants of Saul. Choose one man to come down here and fight. Me. If he kills me, then he will be your slaves. But if I kill him, then you will be our slaves. I defy the armies of Israel today. Send me a man who will fight me. When Saul and the Israelites heard this, they were terrified and deeply shaken. They got afraid. They couldn't face the enemy. But notice the 17th or the 16th verse. For 40 days, every morning and evening, the Philistine champion strutted in front of the Israelite army. He would hunt himself and fought himself before the Israelites. They were afraid to face the enemy, afraid to face the devil. But notice verse number 32. The Bible tells us, don't worry about this Philistine. David told Saul, I'll go and fight him. I'll stand up and rise up and fight the enemy. I'll face that devil. God is looking for some people in this church that is not afraid to stand up, stand flat footed, and let the devil know that we are not terrified. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Told y'all wouldn't be long. The third point is that after you've repented, after you face that devil and cast him out, look out for the harvest. Let's go to Acts chapter 16. Same chapter. If we go down to verse number 27, it talks about the jail. He woke up to see because you got to understand here that when Paul and they, they, they got that spirit out of the woman, the scripture says that the men got mad because now they weren't making the money that they was making anymore. So they got mad and angry at Paul and Silas and they began to put them in jail. They beat them and they put them in jail. Notice the scripture here. The jailer woke up to see that the prison doors wide open. He assumed that the prisoners had escaped. So he drew his sword to kill himself because he got afraid. Keep it going. And the scripture tells us they replied. Then he brought them out and asked, sirs, what must I do to be saved? Scripture tells us here that when the prisoner came and drew the sword, Paul stood up and said, hey, do yourself no harm. For we're all here. Don't kill yourself. We're here. The jailer called for the lights and ran to the dungeon, verse number 29, and fell down trembling before Paul and Silas. Then he brought them out and asked, Sirs, what must I do to be saved? He replied, Believe in the Lord Jesus and you will be saved along with everyone in your household. Verse number 32, and they shared the word of the Lord with him and with all who lived in his household. Even at the hour of the night, the jailer cared for them and washed their wounds. Wait one minute. Then he and everyone in his household were immediately baptized. Paul and Silas, once they fell that spirit once they delivered and got that spirit out of that city the scripture says people begin to get saved households begin to get converted people begin to be delivered when we as apostolics we face the devil you gotta watch out because revival will come the harvest will come and you know the story that how Paul he was a man that as pastor talked about it this morning he was he was doing the church he was doing all matters of evil to the church but the scripture says God converted this man and this individual ended up writing two thirds of the New Testament 
Testament. Why? Because he wasn't afraid of the devil. Why? Because he wasn't afraid to tell he wasn't no longer tolerating the things with the enemy. So Paul continues. He continues the message. He went to Thessalonica and he preached Christ unto those individuals. He went to Philippi and he preached unto these individuals. He went to Corinth. Every place that Paul began to go to, uh, he began to preach Christ. Uh, people began to get saved. Uh, the Lord began to add to the church uh, because he wasn't afraid uh, of these spirits. Uh, when God, get, when this man said, uh, enough is enough, uh, I will no longer tolerate that which is going on. Uh, we as people uh, have to get in our mind uh, that we will no longer tolerate the, the things that are going on in this city. Amen. You can't do it. If we want what God said he's going to give us. God said, I give you the city. You want the city of Bell Blade? It's yours. All right? Now you just got to go get it. You got to possess it. So what are you going to do, sister? What are you going to do, brother? Are you going to sit back and let the spirits that is in this city continue to taunt us, continue to poke at us? Are you going to let your spirit rise up and say enough is enough? I will no longer let this enemy antagonize and push our buttons. I'm going to rise up and I'm going to fight the good fight of faith. I'm going to get my friends in the fight and I'm going to worship with God. I'm going to come to church. I'm going to fight. The good final thing. The musicians can come. When we get to a point where we say enough is enough, then you've reached that tipping point. You've reached that point in your life that you say, you know what? 20 2020, 2020 is right around the corner and some of us been sitting and fixing these spirits all our lives. Ever since we came to this city, we've been facing the same spirits. We've been antagonized by the same devil. The devil ain't doing no new tricks with us. He's coming at you with the same tricks and we're falling for that same trick. We've got to rise up and say enough is enough. I will not into the new year falling for the same trick of the enemy. Bible tells us that we are not ignorant of Satan's devices. We've got to rise up. We've got to get our grips up. We've got to get our yarn skirt about. We've got to stand. For the Bible tells us that the weapons of our warfare, that they are not carnal, but they are mighty through God, through the pulling down of strong. You can't pull down strongholds when you yourself is entangled with the stronghold. You've got to get in your grips that you know what? I'm here to fight. And I will not fall. I will not falter. I will not give up. I will not throw in the towel. I'm going to put on, on the whole armor of God. Why you put on the whole armor? That you can stand against the wiles or the tricks of the enemy. You no longer fighting and going through the same tricks because you got the whole armor on. Help of salvation. Long skirt about the truth, breastplate of righteousness, shield of faith, where you will be able to quench every fiery dart of the enemy. So we as people of God have got to get in our mind. Where we say, you know what? Enough is enough. In Jesus' name. Come on, let's stand on our feet and begin to declare that enough is enough. If you're tired of the enemy attacking your household, your children, your marriage, if you're tired of the enemy attacking your finances, attacking your soul, you need to get to a place where you say enough is enough. Amen. This is why we don't argue and fight against one another, people of God. It's not a flesh and blood thing. This is a spiritual thing. So you want to know why this is happening. It's a spiritual fight. You want to know why things are the way that they are in this clay area. It's a spiritual thing. 
You want to know why AIDS is all over the clean area. You want to know why people have low self-esteem. And you want to know why the young people thinking about killing themselves. Because this is what's going on. It's a spiritual thing. But if we can go ahead and face that devil and say, listen, we're tired of you being here in the Glade area. We can't be here and you here at the same time. Somebody got to go. And we ain't going nowhere. You got to leave, devil. You got to get out of this place. Because we can't share this place. You hear what I'm saying? So enough is enough. So we want to just thank God for that word. Let's clap our hands for that word one more time. That enough is enough. Let's go ahead and put things in action. If you're here tonight, and if you know that you need something from God, maybe you need strength, come on to the altar and pray. We will pray with you. But if you are here for the first time, your first time experiencing, we're so glad we want you to come back. But we cannot close this assembly tonight. The doors are open to the kingdom of God. No one can force you to walk in. You have to go in yourself. But to wait to get into heaven, everybody in the New Testament, everyone that is in the New Testament that came in that dispensation with Jesus Christ after he died and rose again and ascended back after dying for our sins, he gave the information or he gave the key over to the apostle Peter and to the rest of the apostles to preach this message to repent and be baptized every one of you in the name of Jesus Christ. For the remission of sin. So you to get your sins remitted. You need to repent and go down in Jesus name. Everything you've done under the sun as you live will totally be washed away. That means you're starting a fresh slate. But after that, don't get in it with the baptism. Because you need God's spirit to live on the inside. And that is the promise, the gift of the Holy Ghost. And God is going to give that to you. And so I'm telling you to seek after it, seek after God, and finish, allow him to finish what he started. So we want to thank God for you here. If you're here, we will pray for you. But let us all lift up our hands as we leave this place. In Jesus' name, we're going to continue to grow in the word of God. Don't move. We want to continue to be in a place that God will do what is and talk to us in Jesus' name. Let us pray. Lord, we love you and we thank you for your mercy, your grace. Thank you for all that you have done. We give you the glory, honor. We thank you for your word, God. Lord God, you are igniting something in us to say enough is enough. We cannot continue to live the way we live. We cannot continue to do the same things and listen to our own selves. Why don't we turn to the word of God? Why don't we get our wisdom and our knowledge from what God says? He knows all things. And Lord God, I put down everything that is in my life that has turned me away from you. And I pick up the book, oh God. And I want to learn more, God. I pray, touch our hearts. And I pray that none of us get any sleep or rest of sleeping with that enemy or that devil. But let us say, enough is enough. I got to live this thing. I got to get the Holy Ghost. I got to go to heaven. I got to be raptured up. I got to see the Lord in peace. In Jesus' mighty name, we give you glory, honor, and praise. Clap your hands unto God in Jesus' name. God bless you. Make it home safely tonight. We're glad that you're here. Tell your brother and sister you're glad to see them. We want to see everybody here tomorrow at 8 o'clock for Monday night Bible study come with your questions come with your questions if you want to ask God bless you hug your brother your sister hug our sister here our brand new sister in the house of God tell her you love her in Jesus name God bless you God bless you in Jesus name amen amen Thank you.
Я сам не могу. Yeah. 